Let's be honest, planning a vacation can feel like, well, work. You need to book flights, hotels, activities. It's a full-time job just to get some time off. And then trying to juggle everyone's preferences. Ah, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if we could just tell someone what we want and have them figure this out for us? Well, with the power of Firebase and AI, we can actually build that. Let's see how. Now, large language models like Gemini are amazing. They're trained on vast amounts of data, and it seems they can answer almost every question about the world's knowledge you can imagine. But here's the thing. They don't know about your stuff. For example, I can ask Gemini to give me some ideas for my next vacation, and it will come up with some really exciting ideas. However, for a travel app like the one I'm working on here, this is not the best approach. You see, travel apps typically are based on a huge database of destinations, hotels, and other accommodations with complex rules for pricing, and of course, availability. Gemini needs to tap into that data to be able to provide useful answers. Now, you might be wondering, but how do I do this? Well, there are several techniques for teaching an LLM about facts and concepts it hasn't been trained on, and one of them is Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG for short. Let's break this term apart to better understand what it means. R stands for Retrieval, and that means we need to fetch data from a data source. This data source can be anything, a PDF file, a text file, or even a spreadsheet, or, like in my case, a database. A stands for Augmented. So once we've retrieved all the relevant information from the data source, we need to add it to the prompt we sent to the model. Adding this extra context to the prompt is called augmenting the prompt. And then, of course, G stands for Generation. This is where the model produces answers based on the augmented prompt we've provided it with. In my case, all of the relevant data about hotels and activities is stored in a PostgreSQL database, which is hooked up to my app with Firebase Data Connect. To implement all of this, I will use Firebase GenKit. GenKit is an AI integration framework and it was made for building AI-powered apps like this travel planner. It lets me easily connect to Gemini and other models, and it has some awesome tools for RAG. So I need to implement some code that takes the user's input, fetches all matching vacation destinations and activities, and then generates a travel plan. I'm using the Gemini 1.5 Flash model here, perfect for fast, responsive apps like this travel planner. To get started, I will first install GenKit. At the end of the installation process, GenKit asks if I would like to create a sample flow for me. I'll go ahead and say yes. You can think of a GenKit flow as a supercharged function. A flow takes some input, then processes that input, typically using some AI, and then returns a result. That sounds a lot like a regular old function, but flows have some features that make them stand out. For example, they are type safe, allowing you to specify the input and output schema. They also are observable. This means two things. One, you can see their runtime characteristics when you deploy them, for example, on Google Cloud. And two, you can interact with them in GenKit's developer UI, which allows you to quickly make and test changes to your code. Once GenKit is installed, I can go ahead and implement a flow that generates an itinerary based on the user's request. When building flows, it's a good idea to break things down into small steps. First, I define my input. Here, it's what the user tells us about their dream trip plus an optional image for inspiration. Then I define the output. Now, 
We could use a plain string to return the answer the model generates for us, but in order to be able to present this in a nice UI, we need to return the result as a structured output. Just like for the input, we can define a schema for the output, so that is what I'm doing here. You can see that the output will contain an array of objects that are made up of a place name, the name of the itinerary, the dates for the trip, and even more attributes. Each itinerary will also contain a plan for the day. These are the activities I mentioned before, for example, going for a hike, visiting a museum, or chilling out at the beach. With the input and output schema defined, we can now implement the flow. And this is where the fun part starts. We will call the model to generate an itinerary based on the user's request. GenKids Developer UI has a model runner that allows me to directly interact with any of the LLMs I've set up. So I can start writing my prompt and see the results right here in the UI. This allows me to iterate on the prompt and refine it. I can also use the UI to configure the options for the model, for example, by increasing the temperature. Once I am happy with the results, I can export the prompt. This will give me the prompt in .prompt format, which I can then paste into a prompt file in my project. Keeping the prompt separate from my code like this will make it easier for me to collaborate with other team members. I can now load the prompt from the .prompt file like this. Next, I can call generate on the prompt. This will use the model I specified in the prompt file to generate a response. To try out the GenKit flow I just built, I can use the GenKit developer UI. After selecting the flow in the navigation bar, I can type in what I'd like to do on my vacation. Let's see. Hmm. Hiking with my family. After a short moment, GenKit shows the response. This looks really promising, so let's take a quick look at the flow trace to understand how the model arrived at this suggestion. And here we can see that this was entirely based on the model's training data without any input from the database, which really isn't surprising since I didn't connect the model to the database yet. To make sure the model's response is grounded in application-specific data, I need to fetch relevant data from the database. In GenKit, this is done with a retriever. The main job of a retriever is to take a query and return the data items that match the query most closely. If you remember, I used natural language to tell this GenKit flow about my vacation plans. I said, I want to go hiking with my family. So to fetch all of the relevant data from our database, I need to use similarity search. This is typically done using vector embeddings. These are arrays of floating point numbers that represent a text an image, or in our case, a place or an activity. All the places that are stored in the apps database have a field that holds the vector embeddings for this place. When someone makes a change to a place or uploads a new place, the app computes the embeddings and stores them in the database alongside all the other attributes. So let's define a retriever. In order to find all the places that match the user's query best, I need to first compute the vector embeddings for the user's query using an embedding model like text embedding gecko. I can then use these embeddings to run a query against my database. One of the really cool things about Firebase Data Connect is that it generates a type safe SDK based on the schema you provide. So I can just use this method get nearest place to find all the places that match the user's query. For a query like, I want to go hiking, this will return any places that are known to be good spots for hiking based on the data in the database and the model's world knowledge. The next step is to augment the prompt with the data we just fetched. First, I will call the retriever inside the generate itinerary flow 
passing in the user's query and the number of documents we want to retrieve. In this case, we are asking to retrieve three documents. Then, to inject these documents into the prompt, all I need to do is add the context parameter to the generate call. GenKit will do the hard work for me and insert the data at the right place in the prompt. I also need to update the prompt slightly to tell the model it must only use data from the context we're passing in. And that's it. Let's run this again and take a look at the response we get from the model. So this looks a lot better already, as the result is based on the data in the database. And we can actually look at what happened, thanks to GenKit's observability. Here is the trace for my vacation query, and you can see how GenKit used the retriever we built to fetch data from a PostgreSQL database using Firebase Data Connect. Being able to see exactly what happened is really valuable when building AI features, as you no longer have to second guess. Large language models like Gemini are powerful, but they're limited by their training data. As we saw in this video, they know a lot about the world in general, but nothing about your app's specific information. With retrieval augmented generation, we can overcome this limitation. I showed you how to implement retrieval augmented generation with GenKit. Providing additional context to the model allows it to generate relevant output that is grounded in your app's data. By providing context that is specific to your users, you can even personalize the output more, for example, by taking the user's favorite destinations into consideration. To learn more about GenKit and how you can implement React and other AI flows with it, check out the documentation. You can also join the GenKit Discord server to get in touch with the GenKit team and other like-minded GenKit users. But there is one thing that really bothers me. What about the weather? You know, some of the activities that the app suggests might be outdoors. So if it's likely going to rain, I should probably bring my umbrella. or maybe even choose a different destination. I wonder if there is a way we can teach the AI about the weather forecast.